Hello and welcome in my next tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can make this material in Cinema 4D Octane. Before we start, I want to show you what I have in my scene. So we have HDRI, which looks like this. We have floor with pink material on it. We have camera. We have our jelly, which is just this simple shape with caps enabled to make it rounded on edges. And it's put to the cloner. In the settings, we have path tracing kernel with max samples of 5000, diffuse depth of 64, spiral depth of 32, and scatter depth of 16. You can make those values lower, just make sure it's not as dull as this. Now we can start making our new material. I will start from deleting previous one. Now we have clean base and we can start creating a new one. Let's go to create, extensions, see for the octane and octane material. Let's apply it to the cloner or object directly. Double click at the material and go to the node editor. In the node editor, click at the material, go to the basic, change the material type to universal and BRDF model to GGX energy preserving. You can test out later the octane as well. Both of these produce a bit different look, which might be more appealing depending on situation. In the albedo, change it completely to black. In the roughness, let's go with 0.4. Now let's go to EOR and in EOR, let's change it to 1.5. Let's go to transmission, which will be the main focus of this material. Let's change the transmission type to specular and color. Let's make it fully bright and let's add 50% of the saturation, which will produce this color. Now let's go back to the basic and click at the material layer. Let's go to the material layer and add layer group. In a layer group, add specular and shin layer. This part will be a bit more questionable because it's not realistic. It's just to fake sprinkles on a jelly. So let me first disconnect the specular and focus on a shin layer. If we also disconnect it and compare it, we can see the difference already. We have something like a white outline or fall off on it. If we crank it up in a shin roughness to 0.4 or 0.3, it will be a bit more pronounced. Now we can go to the custom pattern and add flakes. If you don't see the custom pattern, just restart the node editor. Sometimes it's just not appearing here. Connect the flags to normal of the shin layer. And in the flags, let's add transform. And in the transform, let's lower the scale. I will select this area to render just so I can have faster preview. And this scale of flags looks just fine. So I will leave it at this. In a layer opacity, I will lower it slightly so it's not as pronounced. Now I will disconnect it and connect the specular so I can focus on it. I will connect flakes to the normal here as well. And here's the most questionable part. I will crank up the EOR all the way up. And if we connect the flakes here to layer opacity and in the flakes change the base color to black, which also will not affect the normal map since the base color here does affect it, we'll just have nice mask for the sprinkles here. Now I'll apply octane gradient between flakes and the layer opacity to lower the opacity of the sprinkles to like 70 probably. Now if we connect both of the specular and shin layer, we should have really nice result of fake sprinkles on it. We can also connect flags here directly to the normal map here, which will result in a bit more rough look. So we can lower the roughness here from 0.4 to 0.3 to compensate that. Now let's apply the gradient here. Let's connect it to the albedo and in a gradient, Let's click at the linear. This will generate gradient across our object. And if we rotate it uh, in a transform here to 90 degree, or actually minus 90 degree in this case, we will have gradient from bottom to top. And we can now squeeze it in here like so. I will again select this area to render and just find value I am happy with. This looks fine. And I will lower the white color here, which is opacity of the bottom part of it, to something like 70 or maybe 75, just so there is a bit of color in it still. And I will also add here fully white at the end of the gradient, just so it's more white at the end of this jelly on the bottom in this case. I will go now to the octa material here and go to the common and check the fake shadows. This will make our jelly way more bright. We can also go back to the specular layer here and maybe change it to something like 4 in an EOR. I think it was a bit too extreme before. And I will just crank up slightly the visibility here in the gradient between flakes and layer opacity. 
So it's slightly more like 70%, 75% maybe. And also I will make shin layer more visible as well, slightly. I will change it to 0.8, just so it's a bit more pronounced. Back here in the Octane Material, I will also lower the roughness just to see how much the normal map from the flakes is affecting our jelly. And I think it's a bit too much. So instead I will connect to the bump where I have a bit more control over it and add gradient here so I can slightly adjust it by lowering the value here to something like this. So there is just a bit of bump going on now. Now I can go back to the roughness and bring it back to 0.3. Maybe we can lower it to 0.2 so it's a bit more transparent. And I think that's it for the main goal here with base, but now we want to make it random, right? So let's apply random color to it and we want to connect it to the transmission directly and it will generate different uh, values between white and black. Also make sure if you're using the cloner here to be on the render instances or multi instances, it will not work with just these instances as you can see. So in a random color now, to define our colors, we want to apply gradient after it. I'll bring back our red color here and at the end I will maybe make Something like a yellow looks fine. And also I will bring it to 32% here and 66% here. I will make two other sliders here. One will be just 0.1% after the red one. And I will make it maybe, let's make it blue. In this case, we can see it's only here at the top. So we'll change the seed of the random color to something like this, where we have a bit more of these colors in our viewport. And I will go back to the gradient and make just a copy of the blue color here by right clicking at this and selecting the blue one. And just with Alt, I will drag it out to the side. I will type in here 65.9, just so we have those three colors and nothing in between. We can make it way more interesting if we blend the random color with something else. So for example, I will make here a bit more space and add composite texture here. And I will connect it directly to a transmission. And in the composite texture, I will add one layer and connect our gradient we had here to this layer. And if we make another layer, it will cover the previous one, of course. We can actually copy this gradient here by holding control and moving it to the top. Let's connect the random color to this gradient and we'll connect this gradient to the layer two. And I'm a bit lazy, so I will just add color correction here and apply it after the gradient here. This way I can just change the hue here to make different color. Right now we are covering the color we have here with those, so we need to find a way to blend it. We'll actually use this gradient we have here by applying it directly to the opacity. Now I will add octane gradient here and apply it between the sine wave and layer. And in here we can just squeeze those two settings to get really nice really nice gradient of colors here. I will select this object here just to adjust it. Something like this. And of course now we can mess with those random color here, changing the seed to have different result of the position of those colors. We can also maybe change the hue in the color correction here to have a bit different color. Maybe we can also apply color correction here to this gradient as well to change the bottom of those colors. And we can have a lot of results this way. It's really fun to play with those colors. And also here in the Octa material, as I said at the beginning of this video, be sure to check the difference between the GGX and the preserving and Octane because the result might be a bit different and you might want to take one over another. Just uh, keep in mind the Octane is a bit more rough when you switch to it so it will definitely look way more rough. We can even compare it here. Right now it's on Octane and if we switch to GGX and the preserving you can see it's way more transparent. And also here in the comment, you can uncheck the fake shadow, although it will result in much darker look. Although I like uh, darker shadow underneath it. When I click at the fake shadow, it's a bit too vibrant for my taste, but I prefer in overall the bright look of the jelly. So I will keep it at fake shadow. And I think that's it for this tutorial. Hope you find it entertaining and you learned something new today. My goal on this channel is to upload one tutorial every week. So be sure to subscribe if you want to be up to date with those. Also, if you want to know ahead what my next tutorial will be about, you can follow me on Instagram where I'm posting ahead what will be next tutorial about. And that's it. See ya.